Langhorne Speedway, also known as the Horn, a one-mile dirt oval, hosted its first motorsports race in 1926. It was located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, which is just north of Philadelphia. And when I say it was an oval, I mean a circle. Look at this thing. You never stop turning. Langhorne Speedway is synonymous with tragedy in motorsports as 18 drivers, 5 motorcycle riders, 3 spectators, and 1 flagman have all met their fate at the track in the time span of just 5 decades. Make sure to watch to the end to see its brief and tragic history in NASCAR. The Speedway was built by National Motorsport Racing Association in 1926 and they operated it for just three years. In 1929, the Speedway almost went bankrupt. This was due to poor management, difficulties in track preparation, and poor attendance. However, Ralph Hankinson took over in 1930 to save the Speedway. He brought in a lot more racing, but the turning point was in 1940 when stock cars first came to the track. It was one of the first tracks to host stock car races in the northeastern U.S. Stock car racing, as we know, was a prominently southern sport at the time. Langhorne Speedway was home to a lot of things in the mid-1900s. The Langhorne Open was the country's most prestigious race for sportsmen and modified cars from 1951 to 1971. Mario Andretti, AJ Foy, Al Unzer, and Bobby Unzer all tasted victory lane when USAC raced here. But in 1949, the track would host just the fourth NASCAR race in history. Curtis Turner won the first race in September of 1949, where he beat out 44 other drivers. Despite having what would become staples of the NASCAR schedule in the years to come, in tracks like Charlotte and North Wilkesboro, Langhorne had the biggest cash prize to the winner at $2,250. Paying out cash like that would surely secure itself on the schedule for years to come, and it did just that. The One Mile Dirt Oval would host two of the 19 NASCAR Grand National races in the 1950 season. Curtis Turner would win his second race, a 150-mile slaughterhouse that only saw five finishers in front of a crowd of 16,000. In the track's second race of 1950, Fonte Flock would win a 200-mile event. The pulse speed set by Wally Campbell was 77 miles per hour, the third fastest pulse speed of the season, just behind Darlington and Daytona Beach. So we're going to skip to the second race at Langhorne in 1952, the first 250 mile race at the track. This race would go down in NASCAR history just for all of the wrong reasons. It had been raining off and on all day, so the race had a few stoppages. That said, the surface had turned to mud in a lot of places. However, the race still went on. The relatively high speeds became that much more dangerous. Right at the halfway point, Nelson Applegate suffered a horrible crash in which he was rushed to the hospital. After being treated, it was reported that he had received severe head injuries. Although he lived on, the wreck ended his short career, he only captured five starts. Another driver young into his career was 28-year-old Larry Mann. While entering turn one, Larry would lose control of his Hudson, nicknamed the Green Hornet, and would slam into the guardrail, flip three times, and come to rest up against a group of trees. He would, unfortunately, pass away later that day at a nearby hospital. This would be known as the first ever fatal crash in NASCAR history. There is another layer to the story, which is that his car was green. It was a superstition at the time that green cars in motorsports had bad luck, many stars of NASCAR and other forms of motorsports in the following decades actually refused to race a green car because of the superstition. Also earlier in the same race, Don Thomas suffered leg injuries when his car crashed into the infield. With just 15 laps to go, Joe Eubanks crashed into the grandstand guardrail, which made his car spin violently. Eubanks' car blocked the track, leading to multiple drivers spinning into the pits and injuring three mechanics. So it would only make sense that NASCAR added another Langhorn race to the schedule the next year in 1953. Yes. Two races wasn't enough, so there would be three races at the only track that produced a fatal wreck in NASCAR up to this point. Surely this won't be a bad decision. Just eight months later, in June of 1953, the drivers would be back to the horn. The first race of the season at Langhorn and May went without tragedy, but the same can't be said about this one. This event would actually be the first NASCAR race that would allow foreign cars to compete. The field included six Jaguars, one of which was on pole with Lloyd Shaw at the wheel, two Porsches, a Volkswagen, and an Aston Martin. 
Unfortunately, during practice for the race, Frank Arford, going for his fifth ever start in the series, was seriously injured when his car rolled and crashed through the wall in practice. His seatbelts broke and he was thrown around inside the car. He died later that day at a nearby hospital, the second fatality in track and NASCAR history. The next day on race day, Ray Duhigg suffered a broken neck after a flip with Jimmy Lee Wallen and driver Lawrence Schultz was hospitalized with multiple injuries. As you can tell, this track was violent. It was scary. Drivers did not want to race here. It literally scared them to death. Listen to this quote from Mario Andretti. I've never lost sleep over debuting anywhere in the world, even with Formula One and whatever. The night before Langhorn, I was actually really concerned. I'd seen so much happen there. I'd seen a couple guys not coming home from there. I'm worried about that. Former NASCAR champion Rex White said, quote, because the track was round, you couldn't see very far ahead of you. If you suddenly ran up on cars, it was hard to dodge them. You were running pretty fast, so if you hit, there is a lot of impact. This is why there were so many horrible wrecks there. It was so hard to react because of the way the track was built. Cotton Owens said that his hands would start to bleed with about 10 laps to go in the race because the surface was so rough. Fortunately, we get to skip ahead a few years and we don't have anything to cover until 1956. In qualifying for another Langhorn race on April 21st, John McVitie was injured and passed away after his seatbelt broke and he was thrown out of his car, suffering massive internal injuries. NASCAR would host just three more races at Langhorn and would never look back with its final race in 1957. NASCAR had enough, as three of the first four deaths in series history would occur at the track. Over the entire track history in all forms of motorsports, there were 27 fatalities and over 100 serious injuries in the 45 year history. In the mid 60s, the speedway was actually paved. According to reports, it made the track a lot faster, but the racing less exciting as it was just a one groove track. In the latter years of the track, USAC was the main attraction. It was understood that the 1970 USAC Champ Car race would be the last for the series because the track would be demolished the next year in 1971 to make room for a new shopping center. The 1970 event was huge. Over 25,000 spectators attended the final race. Although it was very dangerous for the drivers, it was a true spectacle to watch. However, after some delays in the demolition of the track, Langhorn would be back on the schedule one more time in 1971. However, the USAC drivers had enough. The track was too dangerous. The facilities were degrading. They did not want to go back, so they boycotted the race. With so many drivers boycotting, there were not enough entries to have an event, so it was called off. Later that year, the track was finally demolished. Safety is a huge concern right now in the NASCAR community. We have had a couple concussions in the series lately, among other injuries, and we hope that is the end of it. Of course, NASCAR is a lot safer even now than it was seven decades ago. But the last thing we want to see is a string of injuries and nothing done about it. It does speak volumes that we are complaining about concussions, which rightfully so, it's unacceptable, but back in the pioneer days of NASCAR, there would be races in which drivers actually died and others had career ending injuries and NASCAR would just keep going back to the same track with no major changes. Wild to think about. Anyways guys, that was another video I hope you did enjoy. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought about it, what you thought about the Speedway and the safety issues in NASCAR either at the time or right now. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.